The third season of The Dragon Prince has just premiered, and after watching season 3, I couldn't help but go back and watch the first two seasons all over again. And because I've gone over it so much, I've decided to do a Lands and Core video on The Dragon Prince's main cast. Now before we begin, for those who don't already know, Lantern Corps are organisations that have rings. Now these rings give their wearers superpowers, and they're powered by different emotions. And in order to wield a power ring, you have to have a strong connection to the emotion that powers it. Now the different Lantern Corps are Fear, Love, Avarice, Will, Hope, Compassion and Rage. And there are also two other Lantern Corps, the Black Lantern Corps of Death and the White Lantern Corps of Life. And there is a new Lantern Core that is the Ultraviolet Light. Though no one knows exactly what emotion powers this particular Lantern Core, it is believed to be powered by shame. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Ezran. Now, part of me wants to say hope, as he tries to end the rift between humans and Xadia, and displays a great amount of hope there. But he also shows great willpower. After all, not many people would have the will to abdicate the throne and go to prison. A decision I disagreed with, but it still took an amazing amount of courage and willpower. But ultimately, I think the emotion he has the most of is compassion. All of his decisions as king were for the good of his people, and to save as many lives as possible, because he cares about his citizens and was prepared to put their needs before his, which is exactly what a king should be like. But throughout the show, he displays compassion a great deal to all of the animals he meets, and even to his enemies, as he refused to execute Viren or his children. All because he cares about everyone around him and can put himself in their shoes. Even insisting that all of the soldiers who didn't want to fight would be allowed to return home. Now this is all pure compassion, and I think it clearly places him in the Indigo Lantern Corps. Callum. For me, hope is the obvious choice. After all, it was Callum who had hope that they could bring the Dragon Prince home and heal the rift between the humans and the creatures of Zadia. And more importantly, he was the one who had hope that a human could learn magic. No one agreed with him on this. No one helped him. Everyone said it was impossible. But throughout it all, he believed that he could do it and that humans could perform magic. And not just dark magic, but the other magics as well. Look, I've heard it before, that humans can't do magic, that it's not my destiny, but I know the Sky Arcanum. And because he held on to this with such conviction, he was eventually able to learn how to perform sky magic and moon magic, and presumably all of the other forms of magic as well. Which actually means he's likely to end up being one of the most powerful mages in the world, as no one else can actually do this. Other humans can't do magic at all, and even elves can only use the magic they are born with at least insofar as we've seen on the show. But this means that elves can only perform sky magic, moon magic, sea magic, sun magic, earth magic, or star magic, but they can't perform more than one of these. But Callum can touch into them all, all because he had faith that he could. And I know this could be interpreted as willpower, and he did indeed have a great amount of willpower to achieve this, and to achieve his goal of getting the Dragon Prince into Zadia, but I believe it was his faith that was the strongest of all. He believed in what others considered to be impossible, and he never wavered in his conviction. And that is exactly the attributes that the Hope Lantern Corps members have. Rayla. Now, when we first meet Rayla, she is an assassin and a very skilled warrior. She's basically a kick-ass ninja with twin blade swords. So fear seems the natural choice for an assassin like this. But Rayla never actually kills anyone. Even though everyone has told her that she is an assassin, and presumably led her down this path all her life. Even so, she realises that she doesn't actually want to be an assassin, and so she turns away to become someone else. Which is why I think willpower is really the only choice. Turning your back on something that you've been raised to believe in and trained in for most of your life is insanely difficult, especially when we're talking from a very young age. And it's not just this. When she met Prince Ezran, she was supposed to kill him, but she chose not to because she wanted to bring the Dragon Prince home and create peace. But the catch was that she had a magic ribbon around her arm that was going to cut her hand off if she didn't kill Ezran, as it could only be released with his death. And she had every opportunity to kill him, and yet even when the ribbon was causing her great pain and stopped her using her hand and was very close to chopping it off, even then she held strong to her conviction for peace and refused to kill him. The good news is that the binding will fall off naturally. When my hand does. 
And that takes an unimaginable amount of willpower. I mean, seriously, who has the strength to let their arm slowly be destroyed and chopped off? Would you have the strength to not give in? Because I honestly don't think I would. And I think this act alone shows that she can face great fear and overcome it, and that she definitely belongs in the Green Lanterns. But the fact that she also opposed the life that was planned for her in order to live out her life according to her own plan, well, that clearly seals the deal and puts her in the Will Lantern Corps. Soren. Soren is hard to place in a Lantern Corps, as he's really just kind of a goofball and a bit of a tool, really. He just blindly follows orders from his father and doesn't really seem to think for himself. Now, I know he's not the brightest, but he still could think for himself a little bit. And he seemed pretty okay with killing children. He didn't even really put much of a fuss about this. Though he didn't go through with it in the end, to be fair. Still, it does mean that he's quite morally questionable. And because of this casualness of doing something awful, he kind of comes across like he has no emotions or very little moral compass. That is until he is injured in season two. And then he seems to have a change of heart and actually voices how evil he thinks this act is. I was confused. And I didn't want to do it, but I do want Dad to love me and be proud of me. And in season three, he finally starts to think for himself. He feels guilty for being willing to kill the princes, even if he did fail to do this in the end. And he recognizes the evil inside his father and chooses to rebel against him and save Prince Ezrin. And he then chooses to join the other side and fight for them instead. And although this isn't necessarily a huge display of emotion, I think it does show amazing willpower. Rebelling against his father was not easy, and choosing to fight against him, and even going through with actually trying to kill him, all takes a lot of willpower. Of course, as we know, it turns out he didn't actually stab his father, it was actually just an illusion. But the point is, he was willing to kill his father to protect the prince, even though it was hurting Sorin a great deal. And so I think the only possible choice for him is the Green Lanterns as he doesn't really display huge amounts of emotions and has little to no link to the other cause. But he can overcome great fear and fight against impossible odds. So willpower is the Lantern Corps for him. Viren. Now, at first I thought Viren would actually be the easiest one to place in the Lantern Corps, as I'd put him in the Fear Lantern Corps. But then I realized he also fits quite well in the Avarice Lantern Corps, because all Viren seems to care about is power. Hungry for knowledge and power, both things. I can provide. He is a high mage for a reason, after all. And throughout the show, he does more and more evil acts, all to attain more power. It's all he's really done. As much as he says it is for humans and to keep them safe, really, it's all for him and all to become more powerful. And he inspires great fear. And being in the Sinestro Corps is exactly what he would want, as it would give him the power that he so desperately craves. And it would make others fear and respect him which seems to be equally as important to him. And he also manipulates and lies to those around him in such a way that Sinestro himself would be proud of him. But again, this also links quite well into Avarice because it's all about acquiring power, becoming king, getting more power and control. So Avarice does work. But I think the Sinestro call would make more sense because fear is really what he's about. He's all about intimidation and respect and control. And that really comes across to me as being more the fear lantern call but he could easily work for the Avarice as well. And of course, there's also the fact that he's a dark mage who transforms others into grotesque monsters, and he frequently transforms into a dark monster himself. So if he's not inspiring great fear in you, well, then you'd have to be a complete idiot because this guy's pretty scary. So Sinestro Corps does make the most sense to me. Claudia. Now, Claudia ends up becoming a lot like her father, taking her dark magic very far and fighting in the war. And at first glance, you might think that the Fear Lantern Corps works for her as well. But I think the core for her is actually love. Now, I know that might seem a little odd at first, given that she's a powerful dark mage. But when you look at the choices that she makes, all her decisions are based on love. In Season 2, she could have lost Sorin, but captured the princes, achieving the task she was set out to do. But she chooses to save her brother instead, because he's more important to her. And she then went on to perform an insanely risky dark magic that nearly killed her, just so she could heal Sorin and that he could walk again. And when her father dies, she does the exact same thing, risking her own life to save that of one she loves, using very dangerous dark magic. And you can clearly see that it's changing her. Even fighting in the war was a decision made for love, as she loved her father and wanted to keep him alive above all other things. 
We're all that's left of our family. And I won't let anything break us apart. And she also believed her father's lies about not wanting to kill the princes. I think she knows that he's lying really, but her love for him is blinding her to that fact because she doesn't want to believe that her father could possibly be that evil. Because the only thing that matters for her is family. And she'll do whatever it takes to keep that family safe and whole. She may do a lot of dark magic and she may do a lot of questionable things, but all of it is done out of love for her family. And because of that, I feel that her strongest emotional tie would be to the Love Lantern Corps. And that is the Lantern Corps of the Dragon Prince cast. Now, as always, this is only my opinion on which Lantern Corps they belong in, and I have no doubt that some of you will disagree with my choices. But this is very much a discussion video, so please let us know your thoughts on my choices in the comments, and of course, what your own Lantern Corps choices would be. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.